You're watching a free sample video from Teacher's Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. FDR and the New Deal. By the time Herbert Hoover was up for re-election, the United States was in pretty dire straits. Uh, one in every four Americans was out of work, um, there was rampant homelessness, and shanty towns uh, nicknamed derisively Hoovervilles had been popping up all over um, the country, particularly in and near cities. Um, his opponent, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR, uh, promised a new deal for the United States. Uh, he promised to, uh, well, his concept, unlike Hoover, he felt that the government's role was to get involved intensely in bringing Americans back to their feet. Um, he felt it was important to actually not just preserve the rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, but to protect them and to jump and restart them if necessary. Um, so his promise was to put in banking regulations, um, to uh, give direct relief to Americans if necessary, and to uh, set up a system in which the government would set up all these programs, but then um, gradually fade back into the background as the economy uh, restarted itself. Now, how he started this off was with his first 100 days. Um, then actually FDR uh, started within the first weekend. The concept of the first 100 days since FDR has become a major milestone in every other president's administration. What is he getting done um, to immediately solve those problems that he promised to solve? With FDR, like I said, he got for started in that first weekend with um, reforming and restoring confidence in the banking system. The first thing was to do the Emergency Banking Act. Essentially, the Emergency Banking Act closed down the whole banking system for four days. It was a four-day banking holiday. Uh, at the end of that banking holiday, after looking over all the books and figuring out which banks were um, corrupt, which banks needed some serious reform, which banks were generally running above board, they, uh, the United States government reopened banks, um, uh, essentially reopening Federal Reserve approved banks to operate in the United States. Um, this was intended to build uh, banking confidence by saying, look, we are dealing with the problem that happened with the banks that allowed this to fall apart. And we are now putting in place or we are opening up those banks that are solid. The great thing about this was that it got people to believe in the banking system again. And actually at the end of that banking holiday, people were lining up to put their money back into banks. Um, allowing for the banking system, the concept of deposits and then loans based off of those deposits to continue. Um, the banking, the Emergency Banking Act uh, ended the bank runs uh, that had been rampant throughout the last three to four years. Another aspect of restoring confidence into the banking system was the creation of the FDIC or the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Now, it was started in the same time as the Emergency Banking Act and made permanent in 1935. Essentially what it does is provides um, deposit insurance, guaranteeing a deposit accounts up to a certain amount. Um, and since January 1st, 1934, no depositor has ever lost any insured funds due to bank failure. Therefore, the FDIC has um, maintained its presence until now uh, in the United States, continues through till now. Another aspect of his 100 days was relief for farmers, and this was coming right at the, uh, uh, the cusp of the Dust Bowl. Uh, so he was trying to uh, gain back confidence in what used to be uh, the backbone of United States economy, agriculture. Um, the first of this, or one of the most important um, programs for this, was the Agricultural Adjustment Act, or the AAA. Um, the AAA restricted agricultural production by paying farmers subsidies actually to not plant part of their land. The point of this was to cut back on the overproduction of, of crops. And um, it was also effective in raising the value of crops, which then allowed for a resurgence in the agricultural economy. Uh, the Farm Credit Act, or FCA, established um, a farm credit system 
and it generally was a group of cooperative lending institutions to provide short, immediate, intermediate, and long-term loans for agricultural purposes, perhaps for upgrading um, agriculture, for coming up with new methods of um, providing more um, subs uh, subsistent farming, it's farming that wouldn't require um, overexertion of the land, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the uh, third aspect of the first hundred days was jobs programs, beefing up the economy um, by getting rid of unemployment. And here, this is one of the biggest areas where FDR and Hoover disagreed. Um, uh, Hoover had started quite a few uh, work progress progressive works projects um, in his administration, the Hoover Dam being one of the most successful versions of this. But FDR took it on a much larger scale. Uh, and he put it in a public works administration as well as a civilian conservation corps. In other words, he went the full gamut of the different kinds of jobs available, industrial, um, white collar, blue collar, as well as agricultural and um, government civil service jobs as well. So let's first talk about the um, civilian conservation corps. Uh, this was designed to provide unskilled manual labor jobs related to the conservation and development of natural resources in rural lands, particularly for young men, and to relieve families who had had difficulty finding jobs during the Great Depression, uh, while at the same time implementing a general natural resource conservation program in every state and territory. So it did the dual service of giving jobs, but also improving environmental protection. The Public Works Administration, or the PWA, um, built large-scale public works, such as dams, bridges, hospitals, and schools, and thus were employing all aspects of the economy that have to deal with the construction, the government planning, um, the, the uh, maintenance of, and the actual manning of all of these works. So you have people who are making bids on the construction, you have the maintenance people who contain, maintain um, the actual uh, running of the facility. Um, you have the funding, of the, the hiring of the white collar workers who have to deal with the funding and the planning and the uh, designing of all of these works, not just the unskilled laborers and not just the contract laborers. And then you also have to man all of these public works. If you have a bridge, you need people who are going to be manning the tolls. If you have um, a library or a school, you're going to need librarians and teachers, etc. And so all of these aspects allowed for greater employment of the population. Um, some examples of the public works that are most famous include the Triborough Bridge and the Lincoln Tunnel in New York City, the Grand Coulee Dam in Washington State, and the Overseas Highway connecting Key West, Florida to the mainland. Now, um, another aspect of the New Deal were um, the hundred alphabet agencies. So as you saw on the last slide, we have all six of these had these sort of um, acronyms that have to deal with all the different letters of the alphabet. And so uh, FDR had many more extensive versions of this. Some of the most well-known include the Tennessee Valley Authority, which is a federally owned corporation in the United States created by Congressional Charter in May 1933 to provide for navigation, flood for control, electrical um, generation, fertilizer manufacturing, and economic development of the Tennessee Valley, which actually spanned, majority of which was in Tennessee, but spanned three states. Um, and uh, we also have the Works Progress Administration, which is actually pictured here. It was the largest and the most ambitious of the New Deal agencies and employed millions of unskilled workers to carry on public works projects. Many of them started under the PWA. Um, it included construction of buildings and roads, operated large arts, drama, media, and literacy projects, and it included the federal art, music, theater, and writers projects. So we're, again, we're not just dealing with um, the manual labor, but we're also dealing with intellectual labor. Every level of America is being assisted by the per projects that FDR created. Um, we also have, of course, very well known now is the Social Security Administration or the SSA. 
uh, and it was an independent agency of the United States federal government that was meant to help protect um, Americans in their old age from poverty, from losing their life savings in a banking failure, et cetera, um, and try to um, alleviate the burdens of the old, the uh, infirmed, um, the burdens of widows and fatherless children on the public uh, DAO, if you will. Um, some of these administrations still exist, like the FAA or the Federal Aviation Administration, um, the FCC or the Federal Communications um, Commission, and of course the FHA, which many people uh, currently are getting their uh, home loans out of, the Federal Housing Administration. Now, the, the scope and detail of all of these different programs uh, may be a little bit beyond the purview of the test, but it's helpful to understand exactly how um, uh, how much the New Deal permeated uh, American culture and at every level. And it's also helpful to know some of the information to be able to eliminate wrong answers on the test. Um, another major work that was uh, provided a lot of jobs, again at every level, was the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, the planning and organization at the city and county levels um, of administration, the actual building using both skilled and unskilled labor. Um, every five years, the Golden Gate Bridge also still provides jobs because it needs to be uh, maintained and repainted so that it keeps its sort of uh, regal presence, if you will. And of course, uh, because it is a co uh, commuter bridge, uh, it still employs um, tolls uh, and um, uh, roads maintenance um, on an everyday basis. Now, some of the critics of the New Deal. All ends of the political spectrum criticize the New Deal because of the intense aspects of uh, and its extensiveness. On the conservative end, you had um, conservatives who opposed the high tax rates that helped to fund all the different programs. Whereas on the liberal end, you have uh, uh, these liberals feeling like the government is not pushing um, towards the uh, benefit of the everyday man, that they are much too favorable to big businesses. And then there are even the kind of outskirts of pol um, political parties, like the socialists, um, calling for more nationalization of businesses and the end of big business private property. You have some scandals by FDR. He was so intent on making some of these things work um, that when the constitutionality of some of the programs were called into question, FDR actually attempted to pack the Supreme Court or the court packing scheme. Um, this was the Supreme Court began striking down some New Deal programs around 1935 and Roosevelt attempted um, to increase the size of the court from nine Supreme Court justices to 15 and then packing that uh, those extra seats with judges, federal judges that would have been favorable uh, to his decisions. Now, unfortunately for FDR and for some of these programs, uh, this power cacking scheme was ended. It was actually one of his most um, controversial uh, issues during his administration. Um, the second New Deal uh, comes into play a little bit later in um, uh, his uh, first administration term. Roosevelt called for three major goals in his second New Deal. Um, he wanted to improve use of national resources, he wanted security against old age, and he wanted unemployment, illness, and slum clearance to be uh, ended, so protection against those as well, as well as national welfare program to replace state relief efforts. Um, uh, it includes programs to redistribute wealth, income, and power in favor of the poor, the old, in favor of farmers and the working man, the labor unions. And the most important programs included Social Security, the National Labor's, excuse me, the National Labor Relations Act or the Wagner Act, which basically stated that um, the government is not going to take sides for business and will fight for the vast majority of Americans and for the vast majority of capitalism, that means that the government will be fighting for the working man rather than for business. More like uh, the government will n take neither side but administer and arbitrate the actual negotiations. And since money had often bought um, over federal assistance in the past, um, this actual 
how would you say, this um, reforming act made it so that the federal government was sitting in as an arbitrator, helping both sides rather than taking the side of business. Um, you uh, have the um, New Deal coalition with union members, working class, African Americans, many other different minorities being assisted by these because the New Deal also was uh, desegregated, that it did not take into consideration your uh, gender, your creed, your color uh, when providing these jobs as well. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.